What up, folks? Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Locked On Jaguars. Could Shad be making the biggest mistake in the history of this franchise? I think he could be, and I'll tell you about it in just a second. <laughs> Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Jaguars podcast. My name is Tony Wiggins, the host of Locked On Jaguars, and we thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And, uh, you know, I always say it, we're free on all platforms, man. That, yeah. You don't have to pay, you know, Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On Jaguars. It's your daily podcast. It's your team every day. And wherever you go, you're going to get this stuff free. So uh, make sure you tune in and also like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube as well. Let's not bury the lead. News of the uh, the day or the night last night was it's always something, man. So now Ian Rappaport is reporting that apparently, allegedly, Shaq Khan is going to retain Trent Baalke uh as a gm and uh he's going to be a part of the search process for the new head coach of the jacksonville jaguars if you've been listening to my podcast even as late as yesterday uh you would know i think that's a grave mistake and when i say grave mistake <laughs> a grave mistake people were laughing yesterday when i said that keeping trent balk it would be like keeping leftovers from thanksgiving and eating them on christmas that you'll end up on the throne, on the toilet. And uh, I think to say that is uh, an understatement at this point. And I'll go through and I'll tell you why. Specifically as it relates to uh, Trent Baalke. But first, I got to talk about Shad. I, as we'll get to Baalke in the second segment. I got to talk about the Jaguars owner here. Um don't get a chance to do it much, but I was listening to uh, WJXL, my old stomping ground, my radio station I used to work at yesterday because I was in the car uh, in the middle of the day, which I'm never usually in the car in the middle of the day, but I was yesterday. And I heard uh, Tony Khan. And as I, as people around here that cover the team knew, uh, I used to always tell fans, stop adding Tony Khan and asking these questions. And, and uh he was basically talking about his venture, his uh, AEW wrestling venture. But he let it be known that his role with the team has been very limited to analytics. And uh, that's the stuff like fourth down and when you go for it and when you don't go for it. And his other role was uh, uh, free agency in terms of undrafted free agents. He told me that in a tunnel before. Uh, I may have told a story that I was – I remember the game it was too. It was the game – when Doug Marone took over the team after um, our Gus Bradley was let go, and the Jaguars won that week. And uh, I saw him in the tunnel, heading to the locker room, and he yelled at me. He said, hey, man, I'm not responsible for half of that crap you blame me for when you're on the radio. And I said, come here, man, let's holler. Let's talk. So we stood face-to-face -face for about 15 minutes. In fact, he was walking with Shad, his dad. And Shad laughed, and I told Tony to come here. And Tony came up, over to me, and, you know, he told his daddy to catch up with him. So as the players were going to the locker room, Tony and I stood to the side and had a conversation for 10 minutes. And he explained to me exactly what his role was. I saw him on the elevator going to the press box a little bit uh, a while back, and uh, he was talking to me about Corey Grant. He said, and Corey Grant had had a really, really good game the week before, and he said, you see what I told you? That's That's what I do you know, those free agents. So I've been telling people for a long time, you guys are adding Tony Khan. And I know he had the little rift with Yannick Ngakwe. The thing about him and Yannick was, and I heard this from a, the third source, I didn't hear it from him and I didn't hear it from Yannick, um, is that Tony and Yannick were really, really close. They were good friends. Tony was like Yannick's biggest advocate. And I think there was a wink, wink, man, I got you. We're going to do what we can to take care of you. And from what I understand, the extra money that Yannick wanted, Coughlin is the one who would not sign off on it. It wasn't Tony. It wasn't Dave. In fact, from what I understand, Dave went in and asked for it. From where I hear it, Coughlin had a problem with uh, Yann's agent. So, and he just wasn't going to give him any more money. And then, and then the, the agent probably played it a little bit to the left as well. And it was just a battle of egos. So, um, 
I think Jan probably thought that Tony could step in and 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 just do something. But they end up going back and forth on Twitter. So I think it gave most fans the impression that uh, Tony was involved in more stuff than he really was. So Tony let it be known yesterday. <laughs> I ain't. And, and I laughed because it sounded like somebody was saying, hey, I am the one doing that stuff down there. And he flat out said, it's my, it's my dad. My dad is is running a team. And, he, you know, I, I'm confident they got people in place because I think uh, Hacker, Ryan Hacker Green asked him a question. Like, if you're so successful at this, have you ever thought about basically, and I'm paraphrasing the question, have you ever thought about helping the Jaguars a little bit more? And he was just like, man, I, I ain't I ain't had nothing to do down there in years. Like, and even the stuff he was doing, he hired somebody else to do it. So with that being said, it's the pops. It's dad. Dad is the problem. Dad is the problem. If I'm Trent Balky, I don't turn down a job. I can understand the fact that when you're around someone every day in a work environment, that you are impressionable based on them knowing what buttons to push and them knowing exactly uh, what you want to hear, how you want to hear it, how you want it done. Um, listening to you, empowering you instead of telling you yes or no on certain things, uh, maybe even being a little bit of a watchdog for you. Uh, because, you know, if you read between the lines now, everyone is kind of wink, wink, saying even media people are saying, who do you think was leaking out stuff about Urban? And when Urban said it was a hit job, well, there was only one person that could be powerful enough to uh, have a quote unquote hit job against Urban. And that's Trent Baalke. So um, now what we have is, a, I think, and I've said this before, it's CYA. It's CYA. The biggest problem I have with Shad Khan is not, I don't think he doesn't care. I, I don't think, I said it yesterday on the podcast, I don't think he doesn't care. I think he um, doesn't know how to do what he says he wants to do and what the fans uh, says he wants to do. And I think he has a big flaw, and I'm going to tell you what that flaw is. Some people think it's a good thing. I think it's a not so good thing in a um, results-based business like sports. His biggest flaw is, Whenever it's time to start over, he can't let go of little pieces and fragments from whatever whatever it is he's moving on from. You, you, when, when you need to completely, and I mean completely, reboot the franchise, I think he's failed at that before when he first took over, and it's almost as if he's afraid. It's almost as if he's afraid, either afraid to attach himself to something different or to totally detach himself from what he's familiar with and trying to move on to something else. And it's not because he's afraid of who might come in. I think he's absolutely afraid of failing all over again. You see, the problem is, is when you bring in Gus Bradley and then you let him leave but you keep Todd Wash and you let him sit in, in interviews when you're, well, let me correct that. You fire the defensive coordinator. You keep Todd Wash and let him sit in on interviews to see if uh, who's going to be the new defense coordinator. And then you give him the job, which always blew my mind. And then you, you, you fire uh, Caldwell. I mean, uh, not Caldwell. You fire Gus Bradley, but you keep Todd Wash. As DC, you promote Doug Marone, who's the OC, to head coach. And then when you fire Doug, then when you, you bring in Tom Coughlin, and then you fire Tom Coughlin, and then you keep Marone and you keep Caldwell. And then you get rid of Caldwell, and Marone's still hanging around, and you run Caldwell. It's just a mess. It's like, when are you ever going to realize? that you just have to cut the umbilical cord, man, and just start over. What, what, what is it? Why do you have, you're constantly keeping a connection and you fire Caldwell and you kept his assistant GM when you hired Urban and 
you see, there's always what you set yourself for up for is this. There's always that guy who can endear himself to you because he's blaming the person that left. And we did this with players. You did it with players. And, you, and, and you've allowed it to continue to happen with front office people. Yeah. You've done it with players and have allowed it to continue to happen with front office people. And it's just utterly amazing to me. Utterly amazing that you can continue to allow this to happen. Now, what do I mean by players? Well, whether it's been Jalen, Dante Fowler, Jalen Ramsey, Yannick Ngakwe, Blake Bortles, Leonard Fournette. Every time somebody left, there was these reports that they had to get the bad guy out of the building or the, the cancer in the building, the worst teammate ever and worst guy ever to play here. And But you know what? Maybe it's not the people that left. Maybe it's not Coughlin. Maybe it wasn't Caldwell. Maybe it wasn't Gus Bradley. Maybe it wasn't Todd Wash. Maybe it wasn't all Urban Meyer. Maybe all of them had something to do with it. Maybe, the, you know, we keep talking about Urban and saying that the staff is bad. And, well, you picked them. Guess who picked everybody I just named in management? You guessed it. Sha Khan did. He picked everybody we just mentioned in management. Let's get to it more in the second segment here in just a second on Locked on Jaguars. All right, listen. Think about it. Think about it. Every single person in management that was here was blamed for the ineptness on their way out. Gus, Ty Wash, Coughlin, Caldwell, Marone, and now Urban. The one con you gotta have the worst luck in the world to miss on everybody. The one constant is shot, the owner. And the biggest issue is with all of those people I just named, the biggest issue is he never totally cleaned house. When you when you when you have an environment of CYA covering your you know what, there's always deniability by the person who who endears himself to you and decides that he's gonna you decide that he's gonna stay. That person's gonna stay on. Even in the locker room, there's always a person you can point to. It was that guy. It was that player. It was his attitude. But the one constant here is if you never flush the whole thing out, it, it's going to stay, stay bad. Because you allow to exist in your franchise a finger of con a condemnation that can blame everybody else for something but won't ever look in the mirror at themselves. It all needs to go, man. It all needs to go. So let me talk about Trent Balky, if this is true. And, and of course, this is an Ian Rappaport report and a rap sheet. Rap sheet don't miss. He's like, he's like Barry Bonds, man, with a fastball, okay? If he makes contact, uh, it's probably going out of the park. The thing is, is, so here's what I hear. I don't know Trent Balky. I asked Trent Balky two questions on the Zoom one day. That's the only time I've ever spoken to him or had any interaction with him. A Zoom call, by the way, which is an interview, which is an open interview where there weren't very many people who were impressed with the way he was talking, okay? And um, you hear that he's, he doesn't get along with people, coaches in particular that he's old school and um, 
he's a scout scout, but he doesn't really get along with everyone else and is not good at getting compensation. We've seen that already. And I told you, I've been saying a lot here lately that one of the best things about a, a good leader and a good GM is having great communication skills and having um, the ability to uh, extract the best out of people. It doesn't mean you have to be a pushover, but there are guys that people will run through a brick wall for with a smile on their face. Guys like Andy Reid, you know, guys like that, guys like Bruce Arians and some other people. And I know I'm talking about coaches, but I think what Trent Baalke's weaknesses are for this organization is it's going to limit who wants to come here and coach. If you go get a Jim Caldwell type, who I heard is very no nonsense. Um, although he seems like he's soft spoken, uh, trust me, I I know some older black men that are just like that uh, that don't play the radio. Like you can, I bet you Tony Dungy, as nice as he is, does not play games. It's like those older dudes in in, in church. Yeah, they're nice. Okay, try them if you want to. Hank Aaron type people and i think that's what caldwell is and i think caldwell is the type that will come in here and say i want this this and this so basically trent don't go get guys you like get guys that can do these things for me i'm not going to tell you who those guys are but i'm going to tell you what i want so i think what will happen is um i think trent balky wants to be in control and i think he wants to probably control whoever is coaching And I think he'd bump heads with a lot of the other really good candidates that's out there. And I think you really, really do limit. You just hold on to the past too much, too. I ain't going to let that go away. You hold on to yesterday too much. And yesterday is horrible if you're a Jaguar fan and if you've been watching this team. Just don't be afraid to just cut the cord and just totally start over. But if you're going to do that, here's the, these are the consequences of things that you have to uh, know moving forward. Look at his track record of drafting players in San Francisco. And I know it's very, very easy to say, well, they won a lot of games in those three or four years. Yeah, but they won a lot of those games in three or four years with somebody else's players. The guys that he picked is, is when they started getting ready to lose and Harbaugh got up out of there because he couldn't get along with him. You ran the best coach that organization had had since Bill Walsh away. And while Seattle was out there taking everybody's lunch money, you basically took the guy that took Pete Carroll's lunch money in college away and let Seattle continue to prosper for him. It was a disaster. I talked to three people that used to work. Uh, one still works in the NFL and two used to, and they're back in college. And I said, what's your opinion of him? Isn't one of them knew him and the other two, they say, we never met him, but we heard his reputation. Nobody likes him. It's not personal, by the way. Like he's a, One guy told me, he said, he's a nice guy, but he's just hard to get along with. And he's going to, it's his way or the highway. And he doesn't communicate very well with people. That's the last thing you want. That's the last thing you want. If we're all in a conclusion that all of those guys I mentioned from management were bad, whether you say Dave was bad, Doug was bad, Wash was bad, uh, Marone was bad. I said Doug, Marone, same guy. Coughlin was bad here the second time. Um, uh, what's his face? Gus Bradley. If you're saying they're all bad, bulky, shot, if all of those people are as horrible at their job that everyone seems to say and suggest that they are, no wonder the Jaguars can't win anything and why players, possible Hall of Fame players, don't want to be here. You got to you gotta take, loosen the fire hydrant, put a hose on it, and pressure wash the whole thing, man. You can't, you can't do this, and if he does it, he's going to lose the fans. And those are the people I want to talk about most because – I'm telling you where it's going if it, if it continues to go this way. 
and uh, they can deny it all they want to, but this is uh, this is not good. And, and I'm going to tell you why here in just a second. After I tell you about Bet Online, who has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before, as football continues its march through the college bowl season and the football playoffs in the NFL that are coming up soon. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. With all of these people missing games, man, you need all of the prop advantages you can get. And Bet Online has them for you. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus from basketball, football, boxing, UFC, or your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. Bet Online is where the game starts. And hopefully, your day starts with us here and you make us your first listen here on Locked On Jaguars. I want to talk about the fans. I want to talk to the fans. Um, I've seen a number of people say that they're going to boycott, they're going to petition that this is not true that they hope Shad isn't going to do what it appears uh, Ian Rappaport is reporting that he probably is going to do. I also saw it on Pro Football Focus and other reports that he's going. they're going to keep Trent Baalke. It's easy, like I said, to be impressionable or impressed with someone who's telling you what you want to hear every single day. And uh, sometimes with some people, familiarity is their friend. But... Uh, the familiarity that you have with losing right now should be the catalyst for your activity from this day forward. At some point you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And instead of holding on to people you think might be able to help you, I think what you ought to do is go out and get a fresh start with folks that come from winning organizations that will be able to at least give you new a new lease on life to turn this around. The Jaguar fans are sitting there ready. They're ready for anything different. They don't even care about winning a press conference. I saw people saying that they'd rather, they'd go nine and eight, man, and they'd be they'd be happy. They do cartwheels at nine and eight. Folks were thinking Super Bowl when they found out that Trevor Lawrence was coming to Jacksonville. And just in 11 months, folks are just content with just being nine and eight. They take a middle of the road team. They take a team that's as average as the day is long right now to get away from this bad stuff. But what they won't continue to do, and I'm telling you, they're not going to do it. They're not going to continue to support uh, something that gives them no hope. They're not going to continue to just let me take that back. They probably will. But they do it begrudgingly. And they will sit and they literally will sit and watch games with the side eye and be gone by halftime if the product continues to be what it's what it is now. And they're going to continue to bash and blame Shad Khan. And and now that, you know, we all know what, what the fans all knew, we all knew all of this time. It's not Tony. Now, there's a difference of opinion whether or not Shy really wants to win or he cares about money. I said yesterday, the money's going to come anyway. The TV deal money's coming anyway, whether he wins or loses. Do you honestly think that man wants to continue to embarrass himself and get called out at league meetings because it doesn't matter whether he wins or not? He's still going to get paid. I really, really do think he just has an issue and has a problem with starting over, meeting new people, getting a whole new way of things uh going he, he he continues to appear to not be want to not be totally wrong they continue to dump cargo but hold on to other cargo as if that wasn't the wrong thing to hold on to and time after time again it's proven that maybe it was all jacked up if y'all really thought caldwell was that bad and you think Balky's that bad? Imagine two years ago why it was such a disaster to have all of those picks with those two guys picking. That's that's the opinion that I get from you guys. I think Dave did all right in terms of, even though I used to call for him to get fired all the time, and I did that mainly because of his choice of coaches, but I thought in 2016 he had a great draft before he was 
castrated, if you will, of power and giving it to Coughlin. The year before Coughlin got here, yeah, it was a no-brainer to take Jalen, but they also took Miles Jack, and then they took Yannick Ngakwe. And they signed Malik Jackson. Yeah. So I, I don't necessarily think that they were they were awful. I think I, I believe that's the year they also got uh, uh, A.J. Boye. If it wasn't that year, it was the following year. So to me, yeah, it was the following year they got Boye. But but to me, they drafted pretty well that year. He drafted Allen Robinson, the guy that everybody wants back here. He missed on Bortles and he missed on Joker. Those are the main two. He missed on Borders and he missed on Joker. And Dante Fowler wasn't, he probably should have taken Leonard Williams. So when you really, really sit here and look at it, man, everybody that's been in power has been employed by Shot and has reported to him directly. He's not good at hiring those, those management people. He needs to go to a big time organization and just cherry pick someone from that organization. Take the advice of uh, I, I'd pay. I'd pay people who, who are close to the league, not Jimmy Johnson, who's been out of the league for 20 years. But I would I would pay a committee of people, guys who have been studying the league. Who can I get to turn this around? And I would let that person pick his coach. A lot of people online right now saying uh, it's going to hinder him from getting uh, the right uh, coach because that coach wants his own GM. That coach is going to want his own GM if he is Tony Dungy, Bill Cowher, Mike Tomlin. You ain't going to get no coach that has never coached before. Somebody's offensive coordinator to come in here demanding his own GM. It doesn't work like that. And you ain't going to get no coach that's been fired who's sitting at home and who's available to demand their own GM. The only coordinator I think would probably, who would probably demand his own GM is Josh McDaniels. And we haven't heard any connection with Josh McDaniels. Green Bay, does uh, LaFleur tell him who the GM is going to be? No. Bruce Arians, he tell, does he tell Tampa who, who he wants the GM to be? No. What about Mike Vrabel? Is he ahead of John Robinson or is John Robinson calling the shot? John Robinson's calling the shot. Just go down the list. Oh, the, only one, the only two would probably be Andy Reid and Bill Belichick. Is McCartney telling uh, Jerry Jones what to do? No. Or Stephen Jones? No. What about Les Snead? Is he taking his marching orders from Coach McVay? No. Not at all. Uh-uh. It's not. The GM, in most of these organizations, the GM chooses the coach. And the GM listens to the coach and runs the team. That's what scares me about this Trent Balky situation. There's no, if he's sitting in the position of power, unless they go get a heavy, a, a heavy-handed coach, which they just had in Urban Meyer, one who's going to come and implement a program, and Urban was awful at it, by the way. So we're not letting him off the hook. Trent Baalke is going to be the man running this team. And to me, his track record suggests that he's not the man for the job. So Shaq Connor is, is essentially standing in quicksand because while I agree that a very, very qualified coach should be the guy who goes to if you were hiring like let's say if you're hiring like a mike holmgren type or or something like that or even shanahan out in san francisco john lynch chose him so the point is is even if you were taking a a coach who who demanded or commanded that 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 sort of respect you don't have a gm that's willing to do it and give it to him we just saw it didn't work and then who are you hiring that actually that you actually trust enough to think that he needs to be doing anything else other than coaching the football team? Not not Byron Leftwich, and I love Byron, but my thing is is this Byron doesn't he's never been a head coach before. So you're gonna now 
make him like the pseudo GM too? No. And and y'all need to stop saying that Trevor needs to be involved. You know what Trevor needs to be doing? Working on his mechanics and and bonding with his teammates. The dude's 22 years old. He don't need to be involved in no co no a coaching search or no damn search for no general manager. Stop that foolishness. He needs to be working on his mechanics, getting his body stronger, doing the things that he needs to do in order to prove himself as an upper echelon quarterback in the NFL. And I'm not saying that he's awful. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this. If you really want him to be great, stop putting extra stuff on his plate and let him just focus on doing the things that he should be doing to be better. One of the things that you need to be doing to be better is listen to the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and analyst Lee Sterling because they break it down for you every single day. Before you go and make your wages, you need to make sure that you listen to it, especially now with a lot of people opting out in college and a lot of guys not being available for these pro games. There's always some crazy upset that might come your way, but that could give you a lot of money. So listen to the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling and subscribe wherever you get your podcast tune in tomorrow man it's as the world turns around here with the jaguars and it's never good news it's always something for me to be on here yelling and screaming in this microphone about but so be it that's what we got to do that's what we got to do thank you for joining me today on the locked on jaguars podcast i'm tony wiggins and we'll see you tomorrow